Welcome in everyone to another episode of my Dynasty Fantasy Football YouTube channel. This time we're going to break down some Dynasty trades. If you like what we're doing here, make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. With that said, let's jump straight into our first trade. So, 12 team Superflex, Justin Herbert or Tua Tagovailoa and the 109 rookie pick. So, for me, that 109 kind of seems like a critical pick here. I like this year's rookie class a lot, but by then, the four quarterbacks, you know, Caleb Williams, Jane Daniels, Drake May, and JJ McCarthy, three wide receivers, um, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, and Romo Dunze, and of course, Brock Bowers will all be gone. So at 109, probably getting someone like Brian Thomas Jr., maybe a running back riser, maybe X worthy, who knows. The problem is I'm just not sure if that 109 is premium enough to make the difference between Tagovailoa and Herbert. To me, Herbert feels like an elite player, even though he's in a bad situation. Tagovailoa is more of a system-dependent quarterback. He didn't do anything, really. He was not good as a rookie, whereas Herbert came into the NFL, was immediately good. Tagovailoa didn't really do anything until he got Tyreek Hill and Mike McDaniel in 2022. If I had to pick, I guess I would lean the Herbert side. It feels like a buy low and an elite talent. But, you know, it's a very fair trade. If it were 108, I would take the Tagovailoa side. If it were 110, I'd probably pretty easily take the Herbert side. This is about spot on, value-wise. Speaking of Justin Herbert trades, yet another one. 12-team Superflex again, half PPR, sell Justin Herbert to get Trevor Lawrence, 202 and 204. So if I had Justin Herbert, this would be a bad time to sell him. He just lost Keenan Alley and Mike Williams. Not a great time to make the move. but I actually like this return a little better than the previous return. I think I would rather have 202 and 204 over just 109. This is a really deep class. 202 and 204 will be really good players. 109 will also be a good player, but it's not going to be top tier. And then if I had to choose between Lawrence and Tagovailoa, they're about equal. I think Lawrence is the better player. Tagovailoa has been in a better situation. But... We're talking about selling Justin Herbert here. But if you want to buy Justin Herbert, I want to kind of talk about a little bit of another topic. Some trades, I, trade ideas to buy Justin Herbert because these were not cheap. Tua Tagovailoa and 109 is not cheap. You know, Lawrence 202 and 204 is not really very cheap. I've seen a lot of cheaper things. So first idea, 103 through 105. So it's probably Jane Daniels, Jake Mayer, Malik Neighbors. And maybe a smaller piece, like an early second for Justin Herbert. Or one that I thought was interesting, Anthony Richardson for Justin Herbert. At the end of the day, Justin Herbert is a sure thing. We know he's an elite quarterback. Yeah, the situation doesn't look great right now. But he's still only 25 years old, maybe 26 soon. He's an only QB. Situations change. These pieces, this 103 to 105, Anthony Richardson. These are not known elite quarterbacks. We don't know if they're elite yet. So if you can get Justin Herbert at that lower cost, I would absolutely do it. But the trades listed, those are expensive. So, you know, I was a little more on the fence about those. Next up, 208 or Deontay Johnson, 10-team super flex. So that's the 18th overall player, 18th overall rookie. For me, it's a smash on the Johnson side. I don't know if you looked at Twitter recently, but his recent reception perception, Matt Harmon, came out. It was all green. He wins at every single route. I talked about this a little bit on a previous video, but we can look through Johnson's career a little. You know, 3.67 catches and 42.5 yards per game in 2019. Then in 2020, got that big upgrade, 5.9 catches and 61 and a half yards per game. The big 2021 season, 6.7 catches and 72.6 yards a game. And then, of course, with Kenny Pickett, it all kind of went downhill. Uh, 5.1 catches and 51.9 yards a game, and then just 3.9 and 55.2 yards a game. But I think everything's going to improve with Bryce Young, who I still think is infinitely better than Kenny Pickett. And we know that Deontay Johnson is good. The numbers say that he's good. The reception perception says that he's good. The target earning volume that he's done every year of his career, says that he's good. So this is a very cheap price to pay for Deontay Johnson. Yeah, you're probably not getting a lot of resale value, but if this is all I have to pay to just take the rest of Deontay Johnson's career, not an old player, someone who just turns 28 this summer, 
I would be happy to do that. And then a couple more trades on here. I thought this one was very exciting. One QB PPR, 12 team, 104, 25 first mid to late. I don't know about projecting a mid to late 25, but we'll say 25 first. And Jackson Smith and Jigba for Jamar Chase. I get it. This is a big offer for Chase. But Chase's production is not replaceable, especially in a one QB where you don't have the high-end quarterbacks as values. Chase is my number one player in one QB, Dynasty. And let's look at his stats. So as a rookie, he came out and had one of the best rookie seasons ever. 81 catches, 1,455 yards, and 13 touchdowns. Then in the next year, in just 12 games, he had more catches. 87 catches in 12 games. 1,046 yards and nine touchdowns. And then this year, he actually put up his best volume total, 100 catches, 1,216 yards and seven touchdowns in 16 games, despite issues with injuries, Joe Burrow being in and out of the lineup and injured. So there were some issues, but even so, he still managed to deliver a very solid season. I think these 2022 numbers show the upside, though. I mean, this is on pace for even better than his 2021 season. Volume, efficiency, and touchdowns. So going back to the offer. 104 and 1QB is not going to be one of the top three wide receivers, and there's no tight end premium to raise the value of Brock Bowers. So it'll probably be Brock Bowers, 25 first, and Jackson Smith and Jigba for Jamar Chase. When you look at it that way, you cannot replace the production of Jamar Chase with those pieces. So for those reasons, I will easily take the Jamar Chase side there. And lastly... Last trade, another player who's in the news, Justin Fields or 109. I'll just say this. We are way, way past the point where Fields is worth the 109. I currently have him QB1, QB1, QB21 between Will Levis and Matthew Stafford. And that's not even including rookies. Four rookies at a minimum are going to be ahead of him. So they'll be quarterback 25. He does have a lot of fantasy upside if he ever does play. Justin Fields does. That is undeniable. QB5 in points per game in 2022. QB13 in points per game in 2023, despite dealing with injuries. So even with the injuries, he still showed borderline QB1 upside in points per game. But the problem with Justin Fields in Dynasty is the value. Once you lose a starting job in the NFL, you lose Dynasty Superflex value because you are no longer a safe franchise option. There is always going to be some doubt like there was with Geno Smith when he became a starter, like there was with Ryan Tannehill when he became the tight end starter, you know, like there was, and kind of to some people still is with Baker Mayfield. You never get back to that really elite tier of value. So it's going to be hard to imagine that Justin Fields is worth that much more than 109 down the line. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm totally out on Fields. If I can pay the 204 to 206 for Fields, or if I can get an older quarterback who's either bad, like Derek Carr, or on the verge of being replaced himself, like Geno Smith for Fields, if I can send those packages for Fields, I'd be happy to do that. Because I think Justin Fields has more upside long-term than either of these types of assets. But the 109, that is going to be a good player. That's going to be a good player. I just don't see that the value is on the field side there, especially since the market says you can pay less. Now, if you like what we're doing so far, make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe. With that said, we have some more NFL free agency news. So there's been a few more news, contracts, and stuff like that. So we're going to get into a few stories here. First up, Jerry Judy extends with the Browns, and I don't get it. Three additional years, 58 million, 41 million guaranteed. It's probably a hard commitment through 2025, decent commitment through 2026, and they have an easy out in 2027 if they want it. Now, I get the idea, the general idea. Amari Cooper and Elijah Moore are both free agents after 2024. Cooper turns 30 in the summer, and Moore is a lot more unproven than Judy. So extending Judy to give them something they know they have to work with in 2025 makes sense. Plus, 
even if he plays through 2027, that's only his age 28 season. So you're not buying any years of him being old or anything. But he's done nothing to really earn $19 million a year. Nothing. 856 yards as a rookie, 52 catches. I mean, there's not much volume there. 2021, he had the high ankle sprain. Didn't really ever get back to his form. 2022, he was okay. 4.5 catches and 64.8 yards per game. That's that's pretty good. If you knew you were getting 2022, I don't mind the contract. But 2023, we're back down again, despite Russell Wilson's improvement in performance. Back down to just 3.4 catches and 47.4 yards a game. So he's had one good year out of four. And that's just not good enough. Feels like a massive overpay. So unless something changes drastically, I don't see Judy being super fantasy relevant on the Browns. I moved him up one spot in my rankings just because of the contract. It, it helps give you some security. But I really don't see a lot of upside with Judy. And if there's any way to sell him, get a couple of seconds for Judy, an early second for Judy, I would just take it and move on. Next up, Alexander Madison signs with the Raiders. One year, still unknown salary. That's never good. If they don't publish salary early, that's that's always a really bad sign. But he looked good early in his career in 2019 and 2020. Kind of fell apart from 2021 on. Just never was efficient. 3.7 yards of carry in 2021. It's 491 total yards. Then he just kind of in 2022 was the same. Had even less volume. Fewer carries, fewer catches. Was not more efficient. And then in 2023, he became the starter. Didn't score a rushing touchdown. Did nothing on his 180 carries. Just had 30 catches for 192 yards. Had the three receiving touchdowns, but it wasn't impressive. He lost the job to Ty Chandler and was released by the Vikings based on this performance. So it was bad. But he's still worth just 26 years old. Just 26 years old. He's worth rostering in Dynasty Leagues. He's a running back who played in the NFL. He played. He played in a real role for the last five years. So that means he's worth the roster spot. However, the Raiders still need a running back. Alexander Madison and Zamir White is not good enough. I saw a recent mock that had them taking Jalen Wright at 77 overall. That's absolutely still in play. Zamir White was good in relief of Josh Jacobs in 2023 after he did nothing in 2022 as a fourth round rookie. but. He's very unproven. 104 carries, 451 yards in touchdown, just 15 catches for 98 yards. Most of it came at the end of the year. So, yeah, he's not a lock to do much of anything either. As for their dynasty values, I moved Madison up four spots just because he got a job. I low-key was not thinking that was guaranteed. And then White, keep him at RB31, no change. And for me, the biggest thing is if anyone thinks that signing Alexander Madison means that the Raiders cannot add an early round running back in the NFL draft. That is a lie. And White is a huge sell. I would take any mid, early mid 24 second for him without a second thought. A couple of last more minor moves. Joshua Dobbs signed with 49ers one year, 2.25 million guaranteed up to 3 million with incentives. It's not a huge contract, but it probably means he's the clear backup for 2024, replacing Sam Darnold. He had some experience in 2023, learning new systems on short notice as a starter, both in Arizona and Minnesota, but didn't really do all that much with it. 5.9 yards per attempt throughout the year. It's just not good enough. 13 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. It's not impressive. He did add value in the rushing game, though. 77 carries, 420 yards, and six touchdowns is pretty good as a runner, as a quarterback. So. If he ever goes in, I do think he'll be usable in the 49ers offense, just like everyone else. So I moved him up six spots. He's in that backup quarterback range, quarterback 47. You know, it is what it is. Last piece. Rico Dowdle re-signed with Cowboys. Kind of surprised it took this long. They must not have been that interested because it was only one year up to 1.255 million. The fact that they did nothing, waited, and then gave him an extremely low contract, has him me uninterested in Dowdle. Did nothing for three years before having a decent year in 2023. He was fine. I mean, he was Tony Pollard's backup. 89 carries, 361 yards, two touchdowns, 17 catches, had those two receiving touchdowns. Didn't do anything for me. RB58, 
no real change. He'll probably be the backup to whoever they draft in the second round, probably Jonathan Brooks or Trey Benson. So he'll be worth a roster spot, nothing more. Um, I want to thank everyone for watching the video. If you like what we've done here, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Additionally, if you want to see all of these rankings, more Dynasty trade advice, discussion about that in the Patreon Discord, make sure to sign up at patreon.com slash fantasy advice. You can click on the link in the top right corner. It's also in the video description. And that's the best place to interact with me, talk about Dynasty trades, talk about Dynasty values, Dynasty rookie class, whatever you want to talk about. But until next time, I want to thank everyone for watching, and I will see you all later. Peace out.